Meanwhile, Kate had found the control booth. There are hundreds of switches, and I can't read all the labels. I guess I'll just turn everything on. In an instant, the store came to life. Fans spin, saws whirred, and dishwashers churned. But most importantly, the lights came on. Stripe suddenly screeched in pain. He dropped his crossbow and covered his eyes. He floundered helplessly, looking for darkness. Billy stood up. Good work, Kate. You've blinded him. Now we've got him. Then something strange happened. Stripe stopped short. His ears perked up. With sudden determination, he darted off in the direction of the garden department. Billy was confused. What's he doing now? Where's he going? Then Billy heard what Stripe had heard, and he realized where the gremlin was headed. Oh, no. Kate, there's a huge electric water fountain in the greenhouse. Stripe's going to jump into the water. Turn it off or it'll multiply, and soon there'll be hundreds more gremlins. Kate frantically searched for the shut-off switch. Which one could it be, Gizmo? There was no response. Gizmo? Oh, no! Gizmo's gone! Where'd he go? Stripe stood in triumph under the shower of water. <laughs> Billy watched helplessly. Already bumps were forming on Stripe's body, and soon the bumps would turn into new gremlins. And once the process started, no one could do anything to stop it. Then from out of nowhere, Gizmo raced toward the greenhouse in a toy car. <laughs> Billy watched in amazement. What's that little guy doing now? Gizmo sped around the corner and crashed into the greenhouse wall. The car flipped over, and the tiny mogwai rolled out. He looked feverishly around, then raced to the cord holding the canvas cover of the skylight. Using all his might, he struggled to untie the knot. Then Gizmo's plan dawned on Billy. Of course. He's going to blind Stripe by uncovering the skylight. Finally, the cord released. The blind flew open, throwing Gizmo across the room. Sunlight poured into the room, bathing Stripe in its brilliant rays. Stripe screamed as his skin began to crack. The ugly bumps withered, and he started to melt like a candle. Kate rushed in and embraced Billy. Oh, Billy, he's dead. Yeah, thanks to Gizmo's help. Gizmo? Wait a minute. Where is he? Billy spun around to find poor Gizmo lying motionless on the floor. He rushed over to his tiny friend and scooped him into his arms tenderly. Gizmo, please be okay. That night, the Pelsers had a peaceful Christmas Eve after all. The fireplace radiated a warm glow, and bright decorations filled the house with joy. Exhausted and bruised, Billy rested on the couch with Kate and Gizmo. He petted the injured Mogwai as he pulled a thermometer out of his mouth. You're gonna be okay. Your temperature's back to normal. The Pelsers settled comfortably around the TV to watch a news report tell the story of the gremlin invasion. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. Gizmo's eyes lit up, and he began to hum contentedly. Billy realized who it must be. I'll bet it's the Chinaman, Gizmo's original owner. And sure enough, an ancient, withered Chinese man entered through the door. Gizmo jumped from the couch and embraced the old man tightly. Billy was happy for Gizmo, but sad for himself. Yeah, Gizmo, you really do belong with him, don't you? The old man was stern. You have done with Mogwai what your society has done with all nature's gifts. You people do not understand. You are not ready. Billy nodded to the Chinese man in sad recognition. Then the old man gently placed Gizmo into a small wooden box and turned to leave. But a sound from the box made him stop. He opened the lid, and Gizmo peeked out, his tiny eyes searching for his friend. Billy. Billy grinned. He knew that Gizmo would never forget him. As the old man stepped outside, he smiled at Billy. Someday, you may be ready. He turned and headed off, and Billy could hear the faint sounds of Gizmo humming the tune 
Whiskey and the Mogwai had once shared. 